a handful of elite airmen from the United States Air Force's 596th Bomb Squadron were awoken by the sound of a blaring alert siren on the dawn of January 16, 1991. After months of training for a highly secretive mission they were not even fully informed about, the mysterious endeavor suddenly became real. As a result of the Iraqi leadership's August 1990 invasion of Kuwait, 57 aviators aboard seven B-52 Shadow Fortresses carrying a highly secretive new American weapon were about to embark on the longest aerial sortie ever conducted to that day. It was dark, rainy, and with high winds when Operation Senior Surprise was launched, and it would take exhaustive efforts to keep the iconic B-52s aloft. After 15 hours of arduous conditions above the Atlantic and into the Middle East, the airmen now faced an even more daunting challenge to deploy the new weapon accurately and hit all their desired targets. A new weapon. In the wake of Operation El Dorado Canyon during the April 1986 raid on Libya, a new weapon was created to compensate for the mission's shortcomings. While the assault on military facilities and terrorist training camps successfully deterred terrorist action for several years, the AGM-86B nuclear-armed cruise missile, the service's only standoff weapon, was less than efficient. The missile was not easily deployed and had caused the loss of an F-111 and its crew. Moreover, some errant bombs even injured innocent civilians, or worse. As such, top Pentagon officials instructed the Air Force developers to improve the design, upgrading the weapon's precision to a surgical level. To get with the times, the nuclear-tipped AGM-86B cruise missile was demoted into a conventional air launch cruise missile, or CALCM. After removing the weapon's W-80 nuclear warheads and the terrain contour matching guidance systems, the new AGM-86C version now had 1,000-pound conventional blast fragmentation warheads, albeit with twice the punch. This new missile was also the first to be installed with a Global Positioning System satellite receiver, promising unprecedented accuracy. As a result, the weapon had to be kept secret. For three years, more than three dozen CALCMs waited in their storage igloos at Barksdale Air Base until a worthy threat emerged. Ultimatum On August 2, 1990, Iraqi forces rolled into Kuwait. At the time, the U.S. forces in the area were not up to the task of repelling an expected invasion of Saudi Arabia, and Iraq was the strongest military power across the Persian Gulf, with no less than 5,500 main battle tanks, 3,700 field artillery guns, and 10,000 armored vehicles. Furthermore, the Iraqi forces had access to 160 helicopters and 50 combat divisions with seven corps. In contrast, the Air Force had up to 600 modern combat aircraft, including French Mirage F-1s, Soviet MiG-29s, and Su-24s, piloted by seasoned crews. As for mobile and static air defense, the Iraqi operated about 1,000 to 1,500 surface-to-air launchers, not counting their hundreds of anti-aircraft guns. The United Nations' Big Five nations subsequently delivered an ultimatum to Saddam Hussein. Either he pulled his troops out of Kuwait by January 15th, or they would face military action. Realizing their ground forces in the region were virtually non-existent, the American High Command began planning an aerial response that would at least slow down the invaders, or even stop them. Within hours of the invasion, the second bomb wing at Barksdale Air Force Base in Bossier City, Louisiana, and Lieutenant Colonel Jay Beard from the 596th Bomb Squadron received orders to prepare for a top-secret mission involving their precious and confidential weapons. The Best of the Best The new weapon systems offered a chance for the United States to make a strong political statement rather than deal a crippling blow and potentially hurt innocent civilians. By August of 1990, only one B-52 Stratofortress crew had flight-tested the weapon. As such, it was the only one available to operate the crucial system. 
In order to deliver the kind of strike the Strategic Air Command and the White House had agreed upon, more crews would be needed to be trained in how to deploy it. A few short weeks later, a select group of 15 air crews and maintainers from the 796 Bomb Squadron were introduced to the secret squirrels and taught how to combat and deploy the new weapon. The nickname originated so the selected few could track schedules and discuss the mission in unclassified areas. The mission, orchestrated by the Strategic Air Command, was to be a seven-aircraft, long-range B-52G Stratofortress cruise missile strike against Iraqi targets. And for it to work, the standard B-52 crew of six men was augmented with one extra pilot and one extra radar navigator, so the men could take turns to rest. Planning for Operation Senior Surprise had to be minute to the very last detail, and as the January 15th deadline approached, the pace quickened. The day before, all crew members were restricted to the second bomb wing alert facility, where they remained as the selected 15th came and went, ignored by the Iraqi leader. Unknown to most, except for a few general officers and staff, the mission would play a significant role in the opening of the Desert Storm campaign, the beginning of the 1991 Gulf War. Flashback In the early hours of January 16th, all Operation Secret Squirrel air crews were called into a briefing room. The order was to launch the operation that day. At the time, the risks of venturing into the Middle Eastern skies were not fully known, and the crews were suddenly faced with the possibility of not coming back. During that night, the winds were high, and mild rain had fallen for hours. Even so, Lieutenant General E.G. Buck Schuler, commander of the 8th Air Force, was confident in the capabilities of his hand-selected crews. Addressing the secret squirrels, Schuler described the upcoming mission and its potential challenges, comparing its importance to the 1942 Doolittle Raids, the first air operation to strike the Japanese archipelago, including Tokyo. With their leader's words of encouragement, the airmen's training kicked in, and their fears turned into focus. After receiving a go order at three in the morning, mission leader Lieutenant Colonel Beard notified the crews to launch the operation. Exactly 12 hours before Operation Desert Storm, one after another, the seven B-52s lumbered down the Louisiana runway, taking off and disappearing from view, beginning the 14,000-mile trek into the Middle East. Flying over the Atlantic Ocean, the bombers then headed toward their first aerial refueling rendezvous with KC-135 Stratotankers somewhere near the Azores Archipelago in Portugal. Aboard the lead plane, Doom 31, Colonel Beard called upon the aircraft commanders to check in, getting an audio confirmation from five of the six other bombers, all except Doom 34. Launch Point A few minutes into the call for confirmation, the crew aboard Doom 34 announced they had shut down an engine due to fluctuating oil pressure during takeoff. However, the aircrew was determined to continue with the operation, as it had been decided during planning that a B-52 could finish the mission with only six engines. Colonel Beard obliged. After refueling once more over the Mediterranean Sea, with tankers out of Morón Air Base in Spain, the Stratofortress bombers crossed the Red Sea with their lights out and in radio silence, and ventured into the Arabian Desert. Upon entering Saudi airspace, the crews armed the missiles and started their run to the launch point. Then, about 100 miles south of the border in the far western part of Saudi Arabia, four missiles showed software problems and couldn't be launched, as the men were prohibited from launching any faulty weapons to avoid collateral damage. Firing the operative cruise missiles took only 10 minutes, and aimed at eight targets, including power plants in Mosul and a telephone exchange in Basra. Fifteen hours after the initial takeoff, the bombers turned west for their next refueling, which the crews managed to do despite bad weather and low visibility. With strong headwinds, the air crews with retained missiles or malfunctioning engines experienced increased drag and some of the aircraft required additional refueling for the flight back to Barksdale. 
a year of silence. The mission was considered a success, and all the aircraft and crew members returned home safely. In 35 hours and 24 minutes, the fleet of B-52s covered 14,000 miles all the way to the Middle East and back, performing the longest combat sortie in aviation history, and the only mission launched directly from the continental United States. Even so, the highly secretive mission was to remain classified for an entire year. It wasn't until the first anniversary of the raid that the air crews were finally presented with air, achievement, and commendation medals for their efforts. A few months later, the organization responsible for command and control of the United States strategic bomber and intercontinental ballistic missile components would be deactivated, making Operation Senior Surprise one of the final large-scale missions of the Strategic Air Command. Ultimately, the operation achieved between 85 and 91 percent of its objectives, far surpassing the original expectations. Admittedly, CALCMs had never before been volley launched or operated under real-world conditions with the new GPS technology. As Operation Desert Storm kicked off, the B-52s continued playing a critical role throughout the entire campaign. By the end, roughly 70 such aircraft had covered 1,741 missions, totaling 15,269 combat hours and 27,000 tons of munitions dropped. Meanwhile, the AGM-86C CALCM is still in use and ready to engage targets anywhere in the world when called upon. However, Secret Squirrel was the only mission of its kind during Operation Desert Storm. Because of the intensity of the blow and the degree of destruction that night, subsequent similar missions were rendered unnecessary. Thank you for watching our video. Don't hesitate to click on the like button and share it with someone who might enjoy it. Also, hit the bell icon to receive notifications about our newest content. And don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for many more heroic feats from modern history. Stay tuned.